Okay, so my demonstration for tonight is basic forms of purse hardware. So I got an email um, maybe a month or two back asking to show different kinds of purse hardware. I apologize, I don't remember the name of the person that emailed me about that, but when I get emails or requests for certain videos, I do keep a file folder in my email box and we try to get to as many as we can as soon as possible. So tonight's demo will be for purse hardware. So I'm gonna show you what the purse hardware looks like in the side view. And then I'm gonna have Danny switch back over to this front view so I can show you. I have a one sample that I've used each type of purse hardware in just so you can see kind of what it looks like or how it works in a finished bag. Okay, so we're gonna start off with metal rectangles. So this is what the metal rectangles look like. I've got two different sizes here. So I've got a metal rectangle in one and a half inch width and another one in one inch width. And these are both, I know they're really shiny, but these are both in a rose gold copper color. These are my two favorite widths of the metal rectangles and the measurement is for the inside. So if you're making a strap using this one inch rectangle, you'll make the strap um, a one inch wide finished strap. Okay, so let me pull up a bag that I pulled out or that I pulled out from my living room that I saved over from the lecture. So this is the Sloan Travel Bag and it's got the one and a half inch wide metal rectangles on the front. So I've got the strap fabric down here attached to the bag and then the handle piece of fabric attached to the metal rectangle right here. And again, um, those are the two common widths. They're available in other widths as well, but those are just my two favorite. Okay, now for my second favorite bit of purse hardware and that's for the slider. Um, ah, here's my other one. Okay, so I've got one here in the copper rose gold and one in gunmetal. So sliders can be, can look a couple different ways. So some of them might have this uh, middle bar over here that moves uh, up and down. They might have a static middle bar in the middle that doesn't move. As long as there's some sort of um, middle bar in the middle, that's what makes straps adjustable. And again, I've got a one and a half inch width and a one inch width of the slider. And let's see what bags that I brought up for the slider adjustable strap demonstration. So I've got the Appaloosa bag right here, which this was the pattern that I taught um, when I went to Indiana. And it's got both the metal rectangle and the slider over here. And this is what makes um, straps adjustable. So it's a really simple thing to add to your bag, but having um, the adjustable strap is a really nice feature in the bag. And it's really easy to add. I, I pulled up one more bag. Let me see, where's the other one? I also brought up the dot dot dash bag. And I, I love this fabric. I wish I could find more of this fabric. Um, this was designed by Samara Kaja for Timeless Treasures Fabrics. I purchased it a few years ago, um, but I just love the black and white details of this. Um, we're actually gonna be doing a video for this particular bag in August, but again, it's got that slider over here to make the strap adjustable. All right, so on to the next bit of purse hardware. In place of a rectangle, you could also use an O-ring for a strap, and obviously an O-ring is just a circle ring. And I believe this one was one and a half inches wide. Again, they come in different um, widths. And I've got a bag right here. This is the original satellite bag that I made. And this particular bag has the O-rings on um, the tabs over here. So there's the O-ring, there's another O-ring on the other side. And you can use these if you'd like to swap them out anytime um, the pattern calls for a metal rectangle. If you like the look of the O-rings instead, um, that's just another option for making your straps. Okay, now onto the swivel clip. I've got a couple different styles of swivel clips here. And again, you wanna pay attention to um, this area over here. Um, these are both swivel clips with an opening of one inch wide. Again, if you're making a wider strap, like one and a half inch, you wanna look for a swivel clip with an opening instead of one and a half inches. And I've got this duffel bag that I pulled up. And the duffel bag has the swivel clips on the side straps right here, and the swivel clips open and close. So you could take this side strap, you could take this off and replace it on the side of the bag. And of course, there's, there's one on the other side as well. 
Okay, next bit of purse hardware is the D-ring. And again, D-rings come in different sizes as well. These are three quarters of an inch D-ring. Um, other common sizes are half inch D-rings, one and a quarter. So as you can see, the size really does vary. And I've got another duffel bag with some D-rings on the side of the bag. So this is one of my favorite bags. I actually don't want to use it because it's so pretty. Um, but anyway, it's got swivel clips attached to the side of the bag. And here's the D-ring right here, if you can see it. So a D-ring is just another option um, similar to a rectangle or an O-ring. It's just an option for attaching a little tab to the side of the bag and having the swivel clip on there. So the D-ring, the flat area of the D-ring is nestled in that tab and then the swivel clip clips onto the curved edge of the D-ring. Okay, on to the next bit of purse hardware is the triangle ring. And triangle rings you can substitute for D-rings if you'd like. I've got one here in nickel, which is like a silver finish, and another in gunmetal, which is darker. And when using these, this round circle over here is where that swivel clip will clip onto. And this flat area over here, this is a width of actually one inch, so this will accommodate a one inch tab or a strap. And this will just go on the side of a bag, usually with tabs. So let me pull out this uh, tortoise bag that I've pulled up. And this one has, um, again, it's got on the side of the bag, um, the strap is attached with swivel clips. And if you can see that triangle ring right here is You're first. Blocking your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Danny says I'm blocking my mic. Um, that triangle ring is attached to the tab first, and then that swivel clip clips onto that little circle on the triangle ring. Um, so that's just another option. Again, this is the tortoise bag, and as you can see, I've got um, the metal rectangles on the front of the bag. On to purse feet, which are the cheapest and easiest to install out of any type of purse hardware. So purse feet can look different depending on what size and style you get. These are sort of just dome-shaped purse feet. I've seen some that look more rounded. And most purse feet have either the two prongs kind of in a singular um, piece that would go through. You'd make a slit in the right side of your fabric and insert this through the slit. I've also seen some purse feet that come with washers. And usually when they come with washers, the purse feet come kind of separated like this and they go through the washer with two slits. So I've got a bag here, the Tudor bag. And this is sort of my beginner friendly option for a tote bag. But as you can see, the bottom of the Tudor bag has the four purse feet. Four purse feet is really common for most sizes of bags. If you're making a really large bag or a travel bag, you might consider adding six purse feet instead and you would just obviously have um, the two extra purse feet right in the center. Okay, twist lock. Twist lock is a little bit more technical to install. I left mine in the bag because it had so many different parts. And this is a really fun finish. This is iridescent rainbow metallic finish. So twist locks come with several different elements. Let me cut this out of the package. Okay, so half of the twist lock is the locking piece, which this is what you turn to open and close the bag. And it's got prongs on the back and the locking piece goes through the washer, this right here. So this secures usually to the front of the bag. And then the other portion of the twist lock, um, I've seen some with prongs, but the kind I like to use um, have screws like this one does here. So these, you'll make a hole through the fabric and also a hole in the center of the twist lock because this is where the locking piece will eventually go. And these two pieces just screw. Um, apparently I've misplaced one of my screws, but these screw in place. And obviously you'll have the second screw right over here. And let me pull out a, actually a couple bags that I have twist locks on. So this is my locked and loaded pattern. As you can see on the flap, there's the twist lock and let me show you how it works. So you just twist that lock and then the flap opens and I've actually got a smaller version of the locked and loaded bag in here as well. Again, just turn that twist lock, flap opens, and then when you go to close it, you just twist that locking piece back in place. Buckles. I don't commonly use buckles, but I've got a couple patterns that use them, and they come in 
different styles, some that have sort of a rectangular shape, some that are more rounded. You might be familiar with this from a belt buckle, but anyway, regardless, they usually have this tongue piece in the middle, which opens and closes and usually goes through a hole in the fabric. And I've pulled out the reason to bag right here. This is a size small of the reason to bag, and it's actually um, got the buckles on the front of the bag. So here's some metal rectangles on the front of the bag and there's that buckle piece right here. So as you can see there's the tongue piece that came through the right side of the fabric and I have another bag, it's a free pattern called the Kennedy bag and that bag also uses buckles just like this. Okay I've got a couple more left uh, strap adjusters which are not super common but I pretty much only use them for backpacks and this package is by Dritz, and there's two of the strap adjusters in there because for a backpack pa backpack you will need two strap adjusters and you may have seen this one before I love using the, this is my personal backpack but this is the Cumberland backpack and the strap adjusters are over here just like a real backpack if you'll notice a real backpack also has a piece like this and it allows you to lengthen or shorten those straps and it kind of holds the um, nylon webbing or strapping in place and it doesn't allow the strapping to slide out. Okay, last bit of hardware is either known by the word parachute buckle or a side release buckle. Side release because you kind of push those two pieces in to release it. Um, they're commonly um, coming in plastic just like this or metal which is a little bit heavier. And I think I only, uh, there's a couple patterns that I use this uh, parachute buckle or side release buckle on and this is one of them. This is the Amethyst Project bag and um, oh, I actually got a couple little bags in, on the inside of this bag. Um, but there is a parachute buckle on the inside. This was designed to hold either sketchbooks or quilt blocks and this parachute buckle opens and closes so you can put your items inside or your quilt blocks and have everything held in place so it doesn't fall out when you open the bag. So those are just very common items of hardware that I use. I like purchasing hardware from Emmeline Bags, so if you're interested in finding out about the different types of hardware or different finishes, check that link in the description. It'll take you to Emmeline Bags. And again, the finishes that I usually see available are nickel, which is silver, gold, copper, which looks kind of rose gold, gunmetal and iridescent rainbow. So those are just some of the finishes that are available as far as hardware goes. All right, so getting on to announcing the winner from last week's giveaway. Oh, Danny is reminding me. <laughs> I had a question to ask you. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite hardware to use? So let me know in the comments. My favorite, um, I probably have two favorites. So my two favorites are the metal rectangles, which is what I showed you first in that video and also the metal sliders um, with the bar in the middle. I love adjustable straps and I love having that option and being able to add it to any bag. So metal rectangles and sliders are my favorite bits of purse hardware and the ones that I use the most often.